Well, I wanted to talk about some of my favorite pinch points and funnels. And if you've listened to the channel, watched for a long time, uh, you know I'm not a big fan of big open hardwoods. You know, sometimes there can be a lot of deer in hardwoods, especially if the acorns are dropping, they're milling around, uh, but it really doesn't define movement. And so I like to hunt outside those hardwoods or where the hardwoods are changing into a different type of habitat. And this is a good example of a field edge. Whitetails are creatures of edge. And this is the first funnel that we're gonna look at. And what I like about this area is you can see this transition from early successional upland growth right here to hardwood edge. You can see a lot of the rubs down here, a lot of these locations, you can see the old rubs, the history of rubs in here. And so that really defines this movement and it really illustrates how well these deer are moving through here. I mean, every, trub along, every tree along this edge is rubbed. So I'm looking at this habitat change line, severe habitat change line along this edge. And a lot of people will set up and they'll just look at this edge right here. I like to take it one step further. There's a really nice bench in there, and there's an actual hardwood edge on the inside. So I'd rather be on that hardwood edge, wood edge and blowing my scent back into that hardwood so I can watch this entire transition. I'd prefer to access, access that location, that stand location from the back side, so I'm not walking along this edge. A lot of times deer are along this edge, especially in the morning or at dark when you're trying to get out. So if I can go through the hardwoods where I'm expecting less deer, and of course we'll talk about it with one of my other favorite funnels, that if you can blow your scent off the side of a steep face like this back in here, even better. But just looking at this edge, this change of habitat from upland growth to early successional growth to hardwoods, I like to get back on that third layer so I'm at that extremity. I don't like to be in the middle layer because then I could have deer downwind of me on either side and I have a chance of spooking them getting in and out of the stand. So I'd rather go to that edge back there, that hardwood edge, which in this case is only about 20 yards back. I could still shoot and create shooting lanes out to this. And what's really cool about something like this is this could be uh, on the edge of a clear cut in public land. It could be on the edge of a clear cut or hardwoods in private land. And so, really this transition type could be even a swamp edge. So you're just looking for this change in habitat, this hard edge, and then you're going back into the location. A lot of times, like say if it was a swamp edge, I'd rather be on the swamp side, right on the edge of the water, so that I'm blowing my scent out into the water. I'd rather access along that lines. So again, I'm looking at these varying stages of habitat change, and that's that edge that those deer are going to follow. And it's pretty cool because you can look at a topo map, aerial photo, we pull up hunt wise they have six different aerial photos five different topo maps and you can see these transition changes even just looking at from the globs of trees on the top where you have these big dark globs that are hardwoods where it's more of a smear and green obviously conifer and we see those really tight constrictions it could be clear-cut edge and a lot of times those clear cuts on public land you'll be able to see that dark line i'll give you a little tip on on public land uh, some of my public land hunting buddies might not like this, but I love to hunt clear cuts and I love to hunt early clear cuts, meaning they were just created in the last one to three years, four years. And when you see those lines going through the aerial photos that are white, where those logging trails crisscross, they're very evident, very bright. That's a sign of younger, fresher clear cuts. And by the time those get darker and hard to see and older, that means those deer are probably not focusing on those because once this regeneration, gets above our head level and shoulder level, then those deer aren't going to relate to it. A lot of times it gets too thick in southern areas for deer to walk through and there's no browse value. So as that clear cut ages, not only is there no food, but the deer can't actually hide in there and they don't have that high stem count hiding cover that they like. At the same point, a lot of those clear cuts where I see like in southern Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, when they get to five, six, seven years old, they're so thick, not only can we not walk through it, but neither can a big old buck. So look for this edge, this habitat change, and just this change right here, from something to something, nice hard edge, getting to the side where you can, you can count on deer not being downwind of you, trying to access along that side too. And that's one of my favorite pinch points and funnels that I hunt for white-tailed deer, but let's look at a couple other ones too. That was a really uh, cool funnel and pinch point that you can find just about anywhere. And a lot of people think clear cuts, open ag fields, but also think about swamps and early successional growth fields, upland versus lowland. Um, even habitat changes uh, in age. So you have older timber, younger timber. It could be that the younger timber is 30 years old and the older timber is mature and 70, 80, 100 years old. It could be that it's conifer versus hardwoods. And you're hunting the inside corner 
of that change. You know, it's one thing to hunt along this line of change, but you can see we have this timber change right here. It comes to a corner and then it pops right over this way. And so in this corner, instead of deer cutting this corner, exposing themselves out in the open field, then they're going to cut right on that inside corner right there. And so I'm looking for that. You can look at the aerial photo. You see that inside corner. It's like, you know, here's the, here's the change of habitat and you're hunting right in that corner right there. So you're hunting a little bit inside. And what's nice about this is we can blow our scent out this way. If there's a swamp on the inside or a drop off in a hill, we can actually have a stand on the inside blowing the, the scent the opposite way. But you're gonna find an X in movement. You're gonna find deer that are moving this way this way it forms that X movement on the inside right in there. We actually have a trail camera in there. And what's cool about this location is not only is there an inside corner change right here and here, almost forming a 90 degree change, but if you look right over on this side, the timber goes back that way. So we're hunting in the inside of a lobe here. So you actually have a double inside corner. Deer moving this way, this way along that edge, not going out in the cover, but then they follow the cover back and forth this way. And where we have a mock scrape in there in a trail cam location, we actually have about five trails coming into one location. That's where we hung the mock scrape to check it out. So you can find this type of pinch point, an inside corner. You're not hunting the deer moving out here. A lot of people are going to a stand location, look out in this open field. Everyone wants to see a long ways. I'll tell you what, even during gun season, gun season, most of my stand locations, most of my shots are within 30, 40 yards. That's why I hunt the majority of the time with my bow during gun season when we have these setups like this because I like that shorter shot anyways. I'm back in the cover and it sets up great for bow. And it's not that I don't like shooting them with a gun, a rifle, shotgun, muzzle loader, but I do enjoy hunting them with a bow back in the timber a little bit where my shots are limited anyways. So look for this inside corner. And then once you go inside this, I'm looking for a low spot in the ridge and we happen to be, we're higher up here. It dips down a little bit, and then as this ridge extends out, it goes back up a little bit. And that saddle will cross on the inside. So then you can find an area where not only are they moving along the edge, forming an exit movement from both sides, but we're finding a crossing on the inside. That's where that mock scrape is and where we find that huge exit movement and can locate a stand location in that pinch point and funnel. So really look for this inside edge wherever you hunt, public or private land. If it's private land, you can improve this, you can set it up. We have a giant food plot this way on private land. So we're actually planting a lot of diversity out here in food. We're getting rid of these young trees out here. There's some oak trees in there just because they're oaks doesn't mean it's a good spot. They're shading out the food plot. We don't need them here. We have plenty of oaks around here. Um, they're not offering a great food source for the hunting season, but we're looking for this change in movement right here. And during the daylight, we could actually blow our scent into this field because we don't expect deer out into this food plot from nine in the morning until three in the afternoon. Great time to blow our scent. But we actually can come in a back door, get on in the woods about 60 yards back, and then watch this X movement on the inside of the cover without having to walk through here and spook during the morning. Great morning stand back there. Great evening stand that we can watch from back here. So look for this change in the area where you hunt, this inside corner. It's a standard, well-practiced hunting technique that you can apply to public and private land. And let's go check out my next favorite one too. That's another one of my favorite pinch points or funnels. And I'm using elevation change. And there's a couple different ways we're using it, but see there's some great trails moving side to side right through here. You see, we have a mock scrape here. And a lot of times the reason it's a great funnel is the reason I'm hunting here. A lot of these you can see from the error topography maps. So really important to do a lot of scouting from your couch and if you're on public land, you can eliminate 10,000 acres to a few hundred acres pretty quick because you're looking for habitat change and then elevation change will help you not only dictate where deer are moving, but where they're not moving. Typically they're not moving on the steep face. And so unless they're being pressured to in some way, we have these series of trails coming through here and they're running parallel to this ridge system. They're also on this little bit of flat as we go just about 30 yards over, the ground really starts to drop off sharply, going straight down right there. So these deer are using this bench system. And then what's really cool is when we combine this movement right here, back and forth, we're also combining this with a saddle where the ground goes up to the right. You can see it going up to the clearing over there. And then it goes up back this way a little bit. And so we, we start to see a lot of trails crisscrossing right through this saddle. The saddle is, 
you know, picture a horse saddle. That's where you're sitting in that low point. Almost like I'm sitting right here, I have one leg on one side, one on the other, and I'm sitting in this low spot. Whether it's a steep bump or ridge, drops off and they're moving being pinched, or whether it actually goes up and down the other side, where it goes down right here, up the other side, so we're sitting in this, in this low midpoint. Deer will crisscross not only back and forth, but they're already going along this bench, that flat, almost like you picture a park bench, where you sit down, drop your legs off over, over the edge, and that's the same right here. If I was a giant, I could sit right here, my legs would go right off the edge, and I'm sitting on this bench. So really good pinch point or funnel that's back here in elevation change. And this could be, you know, you're hunting open part, hardwoods out in the public land. And a lot of times if it's hilly, that's why I like hunting those public land chunks that are hilly, because again, it dictates that deer are going to move along these benches. They don't want to be on that steep face. They don't want to be exposed right up on top. They're just right here on this bench system. And then when you find a saddle, then you find that perfect X, perfect X movement. And of course, great spot for a trail camera, mock scrape and stand location over here. Let's go visit another pinch pointer funnel because there's lots of them. Just use your imagination. And I hope you see that that's kind of the trend. You're looking for habitat change, elevation change, that pinch point movement. Again, you can find that from aerial photos and topo maps. Mark them on a map, on your phone go out, find them, verify that there's old sign. In a spot like this, it doesn't take a lot to imagine. Um, this camera right here, it's only been out a couple weeks and we're already been, we've been very happy with all the bobcats. We even have some bear that have come through here and certainly some does, fawns, and definitely some nice bucks that have been in this area. Now this is the last funnel we're gonna talk about and I think you guys get the gist of this. It's uh, we're looking for edge, change of habitat, elevation change, type of timber, age of timber, inside edges, lay of the land, topography changes, especially where all of that comes together in one. And that happens to be in this location right here. But what I wanna really focus on is, we have a very narrow strip of woods. Behind Dillon right here, the edge of the woods is 20 yards away. And you see that telephone pole down there, it's wooded below, but it's so steep, the deer don't utilize that very steep location. Kind of going back to, that's what's nice with elevation change. You can dictate not only where deer are traveling, but where they are not. And so for all purposes, this little wood strip right here is only about 50 yards long. This could be a river bottom going through ag fields. It could be a very thick, lowland, wet swamp that's going through a bunch of hardwoods in public land, just a little bit lower. But deer are gonna follow this edge. And I think the mistake that a lot of people make is they look at it like, well, the deer are going from point A to point B, they're coming through this thick line of woods, there happens to be this, this uh, telephone line going through here or uh, power line going through here. So I want to just point out here, and it's a little bit easier illustration, where this woods is very narrow through this top where these deer are traveling. The big mistake is someone will pick a stand location right in the middle of this funnel in this movement. Well, that's great if a deer's on this side or he's on this side. But in these narrow wood lots, they can be either on either edge. And so big mistake, unless you just plan on hunting here once or twice to get right in the middle of the movement. And that applies anywhere. Even if you're on public land, even if you're only gonna be there for four or five days, you still might wanna have a different wind and hunt on this side and another wind and hunt on that side of the timber. And I think that's a mistake that a lot of people make in any movement is getting right in the middle you really need to play more of the long game. You know, if that long game is only for five days and that's the area that you're in on public land and hunting that spot, especially on private land, you can't afford to get into the middle of this movement and spook the deer. I want to stand on that side for winds blowing that way and one on this side for winds blowing this way. So think of this very number, narrow 50 yard strip of timber and you're hunting the middle. The cool thing about all of this is that if you're working on private land, you can imagine all my habitat features relate to these movements all at once. I'm looking at how deer move over big picture. With neighborly influence, your access, and certainly your food locations. We have a food plot that starts about 150 yards this way. We have heavy cover that goes back into here. I'm standing in what will be a really nice switch grass field, seven, eight feet tall next year. It's already coming in very nice. All these sprigs of grass, we mowed it a couple times. We can see all this little stuff coming up here. We have lots of switch grass coming in here. That'll dominate this area and do extremely well. We're adding a bedding area right here that'll be screened off by the switchgrass. We're adding a water hole, mock scrape. You can see the redneck blind that we hunt back here with our winds blowing towards the outside. So between 
water holes, mock scrapes, mock scrapes at every stand location, Nat matching what we're doing and improving to the natural lay of the land and using these pinch points. When I look at a client parcel, a lot of times I'm looking at all these natural pinch points, taking into consideration of access, what's going on in the neighbors, where we can add quality food, where we can't, developing that depth of cover where we can say we can bed deer all the way back and it's pretty crazy if you look across this valley past the pole that first ridge system where there's a bunch of red cedar back there is incredible buck bedding habitat it's about 200 yards away maybe 250 it's on that side and so deer that are laying in this food the food we have on the new land out there that's several hundred yards away that becomes that depth and that core area where we can get to on the interior road that's very steep and staying out of these fields and food plots on the way in or out. That's about all putting it all together. And even if you're looking on private land, look at how many of those funnels that you can find and recognize over a long distance, find a remote location. And what's interesting, a lot of times I'm hunting on public land. I think in uh, Pennsylvania in 20 seasons, I've shot about 16, 17 different bucks and in for different seasons and what's interesting about all those is most of them i don't even know if i've shot in the same sat in the same tree twice sat in the same ground blind or against the same tree on the ground twice they're all in different locations but they all match huge lines of movements where they're in this bottom and this hemlock this bench system that goes through this saddle over to another bench system other over to another hemlock stand around the corner get the picture over two miles three miles so i'm looking at these same movements what's interesting i'll find the majority of the sign in those areas that boils down to a quick scouting scouting trip seeing where deer are locating in that given year based on the food source of the moment or hunting pressure of the moment still hunting those long lines of movement on public land. It's the same in the up of michigan where i've hunted and shot a lot of deer you're looking for the same funnels over a mile and a half two mile area and then you're just going and finding old traditional sign, historical signs, setting up shop, some public land. You're looking for those same pinch points and funnels, looking for clear cuts. Again, food source of the moment, it really relates to that. And then on private land, you're building it and they will come. Pretty cool. That's how it blends all together. Very easy to look for funnels and pinch points on an aerial photograph or on aerial topography, aerial imagery. And I really like uh, HuntWise, I'm not just saying that, I did develop the weather forecast and algorithm on there for HuntCast, so it's a huge part of who I am and something I've used for decades. But I like the fact that they have five, six aerial imagery photos and then five to topography maps that go along with that. A lot that you can choose from old to young to really find those funnels and change of habitat from low and high ele elevation to clear cuts to pinch points to these narrow strips of timber, inside corners and everything between. Enjoy hunting funnels and pinch points this year. That's what I hunt. I encourage you to do the same. If you're sitting out in the open hardwoods, you're really missing the boat. Find the edge of the open hardwoods and where those mature bucks are actually coming from and improve your hunt with pinch points and funnels this fall. I'm excited to tell you guys about my latest web class. It's how to plant food plots, how to design your food plot program. And it covers everything. And Really, there's 30 videos, over 10 hours, 11 hours of footage, workbook, hats, you know, all that stuff. On top of it, I urge you to check out the link. But I cover five main areas, critical food plot concepts, where to plant, how to create, what to plant, and finally, how to plant. It takes you through that step by step so you can make your own decisions that apply to you and build a great, high quality food plot program this year, whether you have decades of experience or no experience at all.